for now, one knows that uh, the object appears, but who knows that it appears to what? No understanding of that which experiences it at all. So there's the idea of I see, I hear, because there's no understanding of that reality which experiences any object which appears from birth to death. So now we know that there is seeing, but no understanding of it. This is the beginning to know. And when one listens to the teachings that it's conditioned, otherwise it cannot arise at all. If there is nothing arising, no world, no life, no time, nothing at all, but whenever there is just a reality arises, that is the world. So by knowing or understanding this, one can see that there are two kinds of realities in the day. One which experiences an object all day, but is unknown. And the object appears arising and falling away so very rapidly that it seems like there's permanent thing or person, people, all the time. But behind the scene, behind this, there are many things like Mahaputta Rupa, the four primary Rupas, and also the citta and jetasika arising and falling away. And so we learn to see the difference between that which cannot experience at all and that which always arises all the time, experiences whatever appears. No self. Which one is self? It succeeds one another very, very rapidly. No chance, no gap to have the self in certain when it arises and succeeds from one moment to another moment, all day, all life. The first jitta, the second jittas, not the last jitta yet. So this is the beginning to know mm-hmm. what panya is, mm-hmm. when, when there is understanding yeah. mm-hmm. and when there is no understanding. Mm-hmm. The beginning is what you just explained uh, to know the difference uh, the reality which experience and the reality which does not experience anything because we are wondering whether you can explain a little more about uh, when there is a moment of panya and not just body consciousness so soon, very quickly <laughs> from this then that, but you see that uh, we don't have to use the, any word like sati or panya do we? Because when there is the understanding, do we have to? It's called panya in Pali. No need because it understands. So you understand what understanding is. At moment of understanding, what it said is pariyati, learning or intellectual understanding. Without it, there cannot be the further understanding about that which is heard and talked about and appeared right now. So don't mind about the word sati or satipatthana or panya or anything because everyone should learn to understand reality in one's own language. For the Thai people, they're so very fortunate (laughs) because they can listen to the Thai on Dhamma. But for English, I think that we are not as good to explain to you as in Thai. But we try to talk about with the easy and simple word because that can be uh, words for understanding whatever appears now, like seeing and hearing, and that which can experience an object and that which cannot experience the object. And when we talk about the name like sati, Does it appear to know, to be known as it is? Or just dream or talk about when panya is there and sati is aware, right understanding can penetrate the truth of it. It's so far away. So if one understands a reality one by one, very clearly 
and then one can see that it will bring more and more about other reality. For example, just talk about one reality at a time. It's better than talk about many realities at a time. So, if you would like to know about sati, what is it? It should begin with what is it, just to understand that we are talking about what and we begin to understand that which we are talking about more and more. There are two kinds of realities. One cannot experience any object at all, and the other arises and it experiences. It cannot arise without experience anything. So there are two different kinds. So when we talk about sati, it, in, it uh, uh, becomes a Thai word now, but the Thai... Do not, does not understand that meaning of sati at all. Just talk about sati without understanding the nature of sati. But even we don't use the word sati, we can understand the nature of it. Like at moment of touching, what is touched? Yeah, it's hardness or softness, but it seems that Only it's... That. <laughs> Heat or cold, motion or pressure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it seems so much thinking is involved yeah. when uh, knowing the difference yeah, between Nama yet. and Rupa. Not yet, not yet, just so know. much thinking involved. <laughs> not yet. Just what appears when there is touching to really understand it as not self. And what experiences it, it's not I, it's only a reality which arises by conditions to experience it. Without the body base, it cannot experience anything at all. To see the anathanness of each moment or each reality. Yeah, but what you say now, we have to think while we follow what you explain. Little by little. little yeah, by we have little. to think, and thinking is not awareness. No, we don't talk about awareness right now. We just talk about what is experienced and what yeah. experience in order to see that no one there at all. In the absolute sense, there are only realities which are conditioned. Even softness is conditioned. Hardness is conditioned. Mm -hmm. The experience, the body consciousness which experiences it is conditioned. And we can talk about what condition later. But we know that without conditions or realities cannot arise, even seeing right now, without the eye base. When karma does not produce the eye base, there's no seeing at once, immediately, by conditions. Little by little, to see the anatomist, just to see it, or to understand the anatomist of everything which appears, in order to have panya, which can penetrate inside the true nature of reality, as one has learned before, that it has to be like this. It arises and it falls away. But this is only at level of intellectual understanding. But without it, there is always forgetfulness, no thinking about it, no understanding that it